In the last video, we talked about the position function for rectilinear motion, and we described this vector function, r of t, as a rule, a function that takes as its input a time, and the output is a vector that describes the location of an object, and that location then depends on a coordinate system from which we could measure the location of the object. So I want to do an example of circular motion this time. And so let's go to example of a ball on a string that it's, it's being uh, swung in a vertical circle. And we're going to say that that ball covers about 50 degrees of angle uh, every tenth of a second. Okay. And so let's look at that uh, motion diagram get ourselves a coordinate system. We're going to put as the origin of, of the coordinate system. Let's, let's give ourselves a little more space here. At the center where the ball is being thrown, this is the positive x. We'll call this in meters. Here's a positive y in meters. It's swung in a circle, so I'll give myself a sort of a circle here, help guide where I draw things, and we're going to say at t is equal to zero, the object lies along the x-axis. And so we also say that the string is about 0.8 meters long. The string is. All right. So, at t is equal to zero, the, lo the ball is lying horizontal to the, uh, the string, is horizontal to the ground, along the positive x-axis. So if I want to draw the position vector, at that point is represented by that yellow line, yellow vector, sorry. And so I might say that the vector at t is equal to zero has a magnitude of 0.8 meters, and it long, lies along the positive x axis. So, uh, at a tenth of a second later, we we'll look at our dot for our motion diagram. It's at an angle 50, say about right there. And the vector that corresponds to that position is going to be that yellow vector. And so we say the vector at t is equal to 0.1 equal to a magnitude that's exactly the same. And we know that this is now 50 degrees counterclockwise from the positive x-axis. So there's my description of the direction. So let's follow this along and, and see where it is. So at another tenth of a second, it will travel another 50 degrees. So 100 degrees total, that puts me over there, say. And the yellow vector that corresponds to its position is going to look like that. And if I want to write that, I could say this the at point 2, it has a magnitude of 0.8 meters. Magnitude doesn't change. The direction does, though, and I could just say it's 100 degrees counterclockwise from positive x. I could also say it's 10 degrees counterclockwise from positive y if I wanted. Either of those would be an accurate description of the position. And so as long, unless you're told specifically where to reference your angle, any reference is correct as long as you identify it, as long as you define it clearly. Okay, so another a tenth of a second, our particle has moved another 50 degrees, and so now that yellow vector corresponds to its location. That vector has a, we have a magnitude of 0.8 meters, and we can say it's 150 degrees counterclockwise from positive x. We also might say it's 30 degrees clockwise from negative x can't we? This is negative x. If it's 150 degrees from the positive x, it's 30 degrees from the negative x in the other direction, which would be clockwise. So we could reference it that way as well. 
All right. So another uh, tenth of a second, and we're over here, and the yellow vector that corresponds to that position looks like that, and we might say that it is can be written as length of 0.8 meters, 200 degrees, counterclockwise from positive x, or we might say it's 20 degrees, I'll even write it, 20 degrees, counterclockwise from negative x, so we can do either, we can say or, we'll put an or there, write that either way. Okay, and so I want to go at least once around the circle, so 50 degrees later, one-tenth of a second, we're down here, the vector representing that position is that yellow line, r of 0.5 has a magnitude of 0.8. It's, uh, whoa, sorry, 250. 250 degrees counterclockwise from positive x. We also might say it's what, 20 degrees clockwise from negative y would be from its nearest axis. And then 50 degrees later, it's over at uh, an angle of, it's covered 300 degrees so far, so it's over here. Well, that's not quite very good, is it? 30 degrees, it's got to be higher than my, my other angle, so we'll call it that. So my position is here are at 0.6. I'm going to run out of room here. Magnitude still the same, 8 meters. Oop. Got my meters on the last one. 300 degrees counterclockwise from positive x. And then now 50 degrees later, we're here. And we can say at r of 0.7 seconds, 0.8 meters, 350 degrees counterclockwise from positive x or negative 10 degrees clockwise from positive x. We can do either of those would be perfectly legitimate directions and now it's doubled back on itself. Our last now right here, this, this one is R at 0.8 seconds, and R at 0.8 is 0.8 meters, and we can say 400 degrees counterclockwise from positive x. That's certainly fine. We may want the degrees to simply go on to infinity if, if that's how we're measuring it, uh, of course. Or we could just say 40 if we don't want uh, our number of degrees go beyond 360, we can say it's 40 degrees counterclockwise from positive x. Okay, so I, I think you saw a lot of this coming, but part of what I wanted to go through in some detail is again, to give you some practice of visualizing what this looks like. So first, visualize this ball on a string starting here at x and going around the circle. It's going at a constant speed. It just goes around and around and around. Ball on a string going around in a vertical circle. And as it's going around, there's this yellow position vector that follows it. Ev follows it all the way around. Here we have snapshots every 50 degrees, but it's continuous. For every second, wherever the ball is, there's a yellow vector from the origin pointing to the location of that ball. And that continuous function as time goes on is the position vector for that object going around in a circle.